Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I am going to talk about part 3 of Kun Healing. In this video, I will discuss regarding the systemic factors that affect the wound healing. Before we start, there is a disclaimer. And the disclaimer is the same in all my video. Thank you. Now, let's begin. Among the systemic factors that affect the wound healing, I will discuss regarding 1. Age 2. Sex hormone in each individual 3. Stress 4. Diabetes mellitus 5. Medication 6. Obesity 7. Alcohol consumption 8. Smoking 9. Nutrition and finally 10. Vitamins Regarding 1. Age-related factor In healthy older adults, the effect of aging causes a temporal delay in wound healing, but not an actual impairment in the quality of healing. Delayed wound healing is a age in, a, in the age population is associated with A. Altered inflammatory response, such as delayed T cell infiltration into the wound area. B. Alterations in the chemokine production. C. Reduce macrophage phagocytic capacity. The effect of aging include D. Increase secretion of inflammatory mediators. E. Reduce secretion of growth factors. F. Delayed reapatalization. G. There would be delay in angiogenesis and collagen deposition. H. They will be reduced in collagen turnover and remodeling. I. They will be reduced or decreased in wound strength. For number two factor, sex hormone in each patient or individual, compared with the age female, age males have shown to have delayed healing in acute wound. It is exclusively estrogen regulated. In female, the female estrogens are esteron and 70B estradiol. Estrogen regulates or affects the wound healing by gene expression associated with regeneration, matrix production, protease inhibition, epidermal function and inflammation. Studies indicate that estrogen can improve the age-related impairment in healing in both men and women, while androgens regulate cutaneous wound healing negatively. For systemic factor number three, stress. It has an impact on the human health and social behavior. The pathophysiology of stress results in deregulation of the immune system, mediated primarily through the hypothalamic, pituitary, adrenal, HPA, and sympathetic adrenal medullary axis or sympathetic nervous system. The hypothalamic pituitary adrenal HPA and the sympathetic adrenal medullary axis regulate the release of pituitary and adrenal hormones. These hormones include the adenocorticotrophic ACTH, cortisol and prolactin and catecholamines. That is epinephrine and no epinephrine. Stress up, stress up regulates the glucocorticoid GC and reduces the level of the pro-inflammatory cytokines. That is interleukin 1, beta, interleukin 6 and tumor necrosis factor alpha at the wound site. Glucocorticoid influences the immune cells by suppressing differentiation and proliferation and reduce the expression of cell involved in immune cell. The glucocorticoid cortisol function as an anti-inflammatory agent and modulates the tumor-mediated immune response that are essential for the initial phase of healing. In number 4, diabetes mellitus. In diabetic food ulcer, it always accompanied with a hypoxia. A situation of prolonged hypoxia derived due to insufficient perfusion and insufficient angiogenesis, it is not good for wound healing. 
high level of metalloprotease MMPs, especially in the chronic wound fluid, are almost 60 times higher than those in acute wounds. This increased protease activity that leads to more tissue destruction and inhibit normal repair of inhibit normal repair processes. In diabetic wound, there is an inadequate bacterial clearance or delayed or impact wound healing repair. It is due to defective T cell immunity, defects in leukocyte chemotaxis, there is defects in phagocytosis and bactericidal capacity and dysfunction of fibroblasts and epidermal cells. In summary, the impact healing in patient with diabetes mellitus patient is due to A. Hypoxia B. Dysfunction of fibroblasts and epidermal cells C. Impact angiogenesis and neovascularization D. High levels of metalloproteases MMPs E. Decrease in host immune resistance and F. Neuropathy itself for number 5, medication. Many medications such as those which interfere with clot formation or platelet function or inflammatory response and cell proliferation have the capacity to affect the wound healing. In example, A. Glucocorticoid steroids. Systemic glucocorticoids, GC, frequently used as an anti-inflammatory agent. It inhibits wound repair via global anti-inflammatory effects and suppression of cellular wound responses that include fibroblast proliferation and collagen synthesis. Systemic steroids cause wound to heal with incomplete granulation tissue and reduce wound contraction. Systemic glucocorticosteroids may, may increase the risk of wound infection. B. Chemotherapeutic drugs. This drug's action is to inhibit cellular metabolism, inhibit rapid cell division and angiogenesis, a pathway that involves in the wound repair. Chemotherapeutic drugs also inhibit DNA, RNA or protein synthesis, resulting in decreased fibroplasia and neovascularization of wound. Chemotherapeutic drugs delay the cell migration into the wound, decrease early wound matrix formation, lower the collagen production, impair the proliferation of fibroblasts, and inhibit contraction of wound. In addition, these chemotherapeutic agents weaken the immune function of patient, therefore slowing down the inflammatory phase of healing and increase risk of wound infection. For number six factor, obesity. In obesity, there is a relative hypoperfusion and ischemia that occur in the subcutaneous adipose, adipose tissue. There will be a reduced delivery of antibiotics to that region. In surgical wound, the increased tension on the wound edges that is frequently seen in obese patients also contribute to the wound breakdown or dehiscence. Wound tension increases the tissue pressure, reducing the microperfusion and the availability of oxygen to the wound. In obese, in obese patients, the skin folds harbor the microorganisms that thrive in moist area and this contribute to infection and tissue breakdown. The friction caused by skin-on-skin -skin contact invites ulceration. In, in addition to local condition, systemic factors also play an important role in impaired wound healing. Obesity can be related to diabetes mellitus, stress. Adipose tissue secretes a large variety of bioactive substances that are named adipokines. Adipokines impact the immune and inflammatory response. In number 7, 
among the systemic factor that affect the wound healing are alcohol consumption. Alcohol consumption does play a role. In acute alcohol exposure, ethanol intoxication, the effects are A. Diminishes the host resistance by suppressing the pro-inflammatory cytokine disease, cytokine release. B. There are decrease in neutrophil recruitment and phagocytic function in acute alcohol exposure. C. Exposure to ethanol influence the proliferative phase of healing, especially in the wound angiogenesis, whereby it suppress, there is a suppression of VEGF, vascular endothelomic growth factor production, that leads to wound hypoxia and oxidative stress. D. Acute ethanol exposure impact the connective tissue restoration and this lead to decreased collagen production and E. Finally, it also alters the protease balance in the wound site. In summary, acute ethanol exposure can lead to impact wound healing by impairing the early inflammatory response, inhibit the wound closure, angiogenesis and collagen production and altering the protease balance at the wound site. Number 8. Smoking Nicotine interferes with oxygen supply by inducing tissue ischemia since nicotine can cause decrease in the tissue blood flow via vasoconstrictive effects. Nicotine stimulates the sympathetic nervous activity resulting in the release of epinephrine which causes the peripheral vasoconstriction and decrease in the tissue blood perfusion. Nicotine also increases the blood viscosity by decreasing the fibronolytic activity and increased platelet adhesiveness. Carbon monoxide aggressively binds to hemoglobin with an affinity 200 times greater than that of oxygen resulting in decreased oxygenated hemoglobin in the bloodstream. Hydrogen cyanide, another component of cigarette smoking, impacts the cellular oxygen metabolism. Smoking increases the individual risk of atherosclerosis and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, the two conditions that lower the tissue oxygen tension. Smoking also causes impact white blood cell migration, resulting in lower number of monocytes and macrophage in the wound site, and reduce neutrophil bactericidal activity. Lymphocyte function, cytotoxicity of the natural killer cells, and production of interleukin-1 are depressed. This effect results in poor wound healing and increased risk of opportunistic wound infection. During the proliferative phase of wound healing, exposure to smoke causes decreased fibroblast migration and proliferation. There will be a reduced wound contraction. There is hindered epithelial regeneration, decreased extracellular metric ECM production, and an, and an upset in the balance of proteases. For number 9, regarding nutrition. In A, deficiency of protein, it can impair capillary formation, fibroblast proliferation, proteoglycan synthesis, collagen synthesis, and wound remodeling. And finally, number 10, vitamin factors. In vitamin C, L-ascorbic acid, A, retinol, and E, tocopherol, shows a potent antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects. In vitamin C deficiency, it can lead to A. Decreased collagen synthesis and fibroblast proliferation B. Decreased angiogenesis C. Increased capillary fragility and D. Impact immune response For vitamin A action, it has A. An antioxidant activity B. Increase in fibroblast proliferation. C. There is a modulation of cellular differentiation and pro proliferation. D. Vitamin A also increase the collagen and hyaluronate 
acid synthesis and E decrease the MMPs metalloprotease mediated extracellular matrix degradation for vitamin E actions as an antioxidant vitamin E actions are E it maintains and stabilizes the cellular membrane integrity by providing protection against destruction by oxygenation. B. Vitamin E also decreases excessive scar formation. Yes, finally, we already finished the revision regarding the systemic factor that affect the wound healing. I hope you have gained some knowledge from this video. Till we meet again, see you and bye.